keeping our voices down because the kids are not sleeping very soundly. This is my friend Ellen. Hi! <laughs> Ellen came for a visit from, she lives in Austria, but we've known each other forever. She was in my wedding. I think I shared that in the last video. Yeah, you did. I did. And so she's here. She's been amazing. And she brought us this wine from Austria because now she lives in Austria. So we're gonna try it. This is from one of your favorites, right? Yeah, exactly. We live near all the vineyards, so there's a lot of local wines that are amazing. But I haven't tried this one yet, actually. And as a gesture of somebody here, I shared with her Svichik. So, okay. Cheers. Cheers. Nazdravje. <laughs> this earlier. What do you say? Nazdrav. Do we say it again? Na. Well, you roll the R. Nazdravje. Nazdravje. I cannot like roll my R's. It's I like if you were to say it with like English R, it's like Zdrawi, yeah. Zdrawi, yeah. <laughs> Close enough. <laughs> I'm glad I brought you a good wine. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought we would talk about how we met. Which we met swing dancing. Which is kind of how like all of our little circle met. Like Yeah, that's true. Your met. husband and me with my husband yeah. also through swing dancing. <laughs> Where would we be if we didn't ever learn to dance? Right? <laughs> so you want to find a good husband. <laughs> <gasps> or a good wife. <laughs> or a good wife. <laughs> so her husband, Thomas, is German-Austrian. Right? He's Austrian. He's Austrian. Yes. So he's born in Austria. No. Born and raised in Germany. <laughs> okay. But technically Austrian. Oh, interesting. Yeah. And obviously Luca is a Slovenian man. And so it's interesting also to talk about what it's like being an international couple. Yeah, like definitely. An intercultural I think people couple. always ask a lot of questions. Yeah. <laughs> we met at a swing dance event in New Orleans. In New Orleans, yeah. Actually, was it a year or two years after the first time we met that I met Luca there the first time? That's a good question. It was the exact was, same event. Like, yes. And I think, that I think it was 2009 that we met. Okay. Or is that way too long ago? No, because there's a Facebook picture, and Facebook told me it was like nine years old, right? Oh, in the bathing suits. Yeah. Yeah. Was it nine or ten? I think it was nine. So maybe that was 2010. It was that long ago. <laughs> no, oh my gosh. Oh my god. I know, it's really ridiculous. Because I remember it like yesterday. Like yeah. It was one of the best moments, for sure. That was the best event I had ever been to to that point in my life. Yeah. Still looking Me back, too. it's like one of the best memories top ever. Sure. <laughs> I had been like, it was like we started, Mimi and I had started going to like local events, and then we went to like the Lindy Exchanges, and then we went to like the festivals, which are like the upgrade of the it, like exchanges. Yeah. It kind of like all culminated to like New Orleans. Yes. And I had actually done the same on my own, completely the same. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, I'm going to travel a little bit outside my city. City, go yeah. to different festivals and then like jazz where else is there to go but yes. New Orleans so yes. it's like I have to go to this festival in New Orleans. New Orleans is so magical yeah. uh, and at that point you had dreadlocks. I did. <laughs> and I remember being like, so amazed that you had dreadlocks like I couldn't believe somebody had the guts to do dreadlocks. Really? Like that. Yeah That's because funny. everyone had told me Everyone had told me, if you ever want to get rid of them, you have to shave them off. You have to shave your head. Right. And then she, like, just combed them out one day <laughs> and then had regular hair. Like, <laughs> it took two days. It took, I think, I think two eight hours of combing. Like, I was just watching TV, basically, and yeah. combing my hair. And then, after that, after we, like, met in New Orleans, then I came to Portland. That's to right. To Portland Exchange. You did. You drove Stayed up to Portland. You. And went to that event. That was super fun. Got to see, like, your home city. Yeah. You came down to California and stayed with us. Yeah, for Camp time. Hollywood. Yeah, Camp yes. Hollywood. <laughs> and we were at New Orleans again. Yeah. I had so many good memories. Gosh, I swear swing dancing is such a great way to, like, go places and meet people. Yes, it's and the best way to travel. It really is. Yeah, because you can, you get to see, like, the local people and meet yeah. them and... Like for and you get to have the great events that are centered around it, and it's like, yeah. Yeah, yeah I remember going to Camp Hollywood, mm -hmm. and I remember you being like, do you know this guy? <laughs> He's from Slovenia. <laughs> I'm like, where? <laughs> like, His name's Luca, maybe you met him at an event. I was like, I have no idea who you're talking about. <laughs> but that was the first little hint. I really, really remember you. And once we met Luca, or I met, we all met Luca in New Orleans. New Orleans. Yeah. 
then we that was in April, and then again for New Year's, we oh, came back. Yeah, from New that Year's. was a good New Year's too. It was a really good New Year's. <laughs> It was a lot of fun. So we've had a lot of history. Yes. We've done a lot of swing dancing <laughs> events, traveling things together. Yes. And now we live in our respective cities. You know what I think is most interesting is that mm -hmm. now that you live in Slovenia and I live in Austria, we live closer to one another <laughs> than we ever have it's when we true. lived in America. It's true. Like, it's so crazy. Because if I, when I drove to Portland, it was nine or ten yeah, hours. Yeah, quite it was far. Long, it was a long trip. Yeah. And then you moved to New Orleans, which was like 38 <laughs> hours. <laughs> now we live only three like, and a half. Three and a half like hours? That's crazy. That's, Amazing. As an American, that's nothing. <laughs> now we're internationally, interculturally married. Mm -hmm. Well, not you and I are married. But we're <laughs> separately married to other people. <laughs> what do you think was like are the best things and the most challenging things about being in an international relationship? I think communication is just the hardest because for sure, so many times I will say something or Thomas will say something, and it's just interpreted how yeah. you would interpret it as your language, mm -hmm. and then like it's totally not what the person meant. Yes. Yeah. This is so true because I look at a color and I'm like, oh, in America we call this red. And they're like, well, in Slovenia we call this orange. And you're just like, that's how the differences happen. Yeah, exactly. Yes. So that's definitely, I mean, and it just happens so fast. And especially at the beginning, like you don't even know why you're fighting, but yeah. it turns into a big fight. It's true. And then you have to like backtrack and figure out like what the person said and like, oh, what I really meant. And when somebody says this, then yes. it just means that. Yes. <laughs> We've had this happen so many times. Yeah. So now it's much better because like you can kind of like A I know the culture better, mm -hmm. like and, mm -hmm. and I we've had so many discussions about American culture as well that mm -hmm. Thomas also knows my culture better so we can catch it faster. Recently I watched something from Henry Winkler who played the Fonts, right? Yeah. It was just a short clip and He's been married for a very, very long time, like, mm -hmm. super cute, like, talking about his wife. And he said that, like, what he discovered is it doesn't matter what you say, it matters how the other person hears it. And this, Wise like, I words. told this to Thomas, and he's like, oh. It's like, the last month, like, so it totally sense. changes everything. <laughs> really? <laughs> and what do you think are the best things about it? I mean, I love it. I love, it's so engaging, right? Like, I'm mm. never bored. There's always something... I don't know, there's like a, it's just like a little off kilter, you know? Mm -hmm. And I just like that, that there's like, the way he'll, especially at the beginning, like he would say something and put it into words. Then now that I know German, I'm like, oh, I see how the German translated, but mm -hmm. it just puts it in a new perspective. Mm -hmm. Like, ah, I never would have thought of it with this phrase. Hmm. I wish I could tell you an example. <laughs> <laughs> I would say one of the things is like just getting to broaden your own perspective and view on like the world like yes. suddenly your your life and your world goes from being like here to being here and I think that's something that I've loved that's happened to me it's not like I can take credit for it like I love this person that I've become but it's like coming outside of my home country my home like my people <laughs> like everything to here has given me a totally different view of my home and like America and Americans yeah. and also just like people all over the world. What do you miss in New Orleans? Mm. That's <laughs> the place like that gets my heartstrings mm -hmm. and there's no recreating. I feel like New Orleans like takes a little piece of your heart. Yeah. Like, like it's almost like you fall in love. I mean we always call it like Mama Nola. Like it's living, mm -hmm. breathing, like it's, so it's like the like the relationship you never got over. Like, you know, like <laughs> yes. every time. Like, <laughs> yes. Oh. Like that's what, sometimes I really that's what I get sad for. It's like ah, oh, I just mm -hmm. wish I could go walk down the street, have music coming out from multiple Lucky bars. 13. Yeah. Get some, Eat some tater, tater tachos. tachos at oh. 13. <laughs> or a pita pizza. <laughs> Ooh. Ah, oh, yeah. It just is magical. If you ever get the chance to go, do it. Yeah. <laughs> Especially if you're going for the first time, like, go for the jazz festival. Yeah, you it's think like, so? Oh, it's so, like, it's so much, like, don't go for Mardi Gras. Like, no. Don't do that. Well, like, nah. I, I feel like if you go for the first time and you experience Mardi Gras, like, you don't get, like, 
the soul part. Mm-hmm. Like, you get the very commercial, like, very, like, party s- side of it. And there's a lot of, like, amazing costumes and everything to see. But, like, the thing that makes you fall in love. Jazz festival, or maybe, like, the after jazz festival. Like, yeah, you know, like, that's, a, that's the secret best time yeah. to go. <laughs> <laughs> it's right after everything is over, because then it gets really quiet. But the, but the music is still everywhere, mm. so it's really nice. <sighs> <laughs> so you have this really peaceful. Mm. You can go into the, all the all the jazz clubs, and the crowds are gone, but the m- amazing bands are still playing. The music. Mm. I just remember the first time going there, thinking how incredible it was that you could just be walking down the street and you just hear music, like amazing yeah. music. Yeah. And you just kind of follow it, and there's this like little band who look like nothing, and they're just playing incredible music, and then you're like stand there and you watch, you dance, you like hang out, and then you like leave there, you turn the corner, and there's another amazing <laughs> band! And there's no other way to do New Orleans than to just mm-hmm. wander and follow totally. all of these in, all of these music, whatever yes. catches your eye. And That's you have the, to go for crayfish too. Yeah, crawfish. Crawfish. <laughs> Sorry. You've been gone Do you know long. what? In, Amer- <laughs> or in California we call the, I always grew up calling them crawdads. Uh-huh. And then, uh, my Grandpa called them crayfish. Yeah, I've heard crayfish, but I don't know where it crawfish. comes from. Definitely. Ah, oh, but I would never say eh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I haven't been there since when I think when we went there. Okay, let me Orleans. ask you a serious question. If you had to say where you fell in love, okay, with Luca. Yes. Where did you fall in love? For sure, New Orleans. Yeah, me and Thomas too. That's why I ask. <laughs> <laughs> for sure because we met in Sacramento mm-hmm. and then we like talked and I was like super in love with just who, the person that I was talking to yeah but it was like well let's meet and see if we're as good together as we are like just talking yeah and it was like the whole weekend we spent together and it was like you kind of like have this figuring out period mm. which was just like very short <laughs> and then it was just like the most magical setting for falling in love yes absolutely and then we got engaged there like i got yeah. to i got to be part of that i know you I got was, to plan it i felt all. special <laughs> i was happy luca asked me hmm it was such a great night hmm keep telling everybody how i'm going to tell the story of how we met <laughs> Like our story, hmm. and I keep dropping hints, and people are like, "When are you gonna finally <laughs> tell your story?" <laughs> hmm. All right. Well, this is definitely enough material. <laughs> the next time, Mariah and Ellen, I think I need to come to yes. Eis- that would Eisenstadt. Be Eisenstadt. Eisenstadt. Yeah. And see your little hometown. Yeah, definitely. It's so cute. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, please like it. If you like me and Ellen, please subscribe to both of us. <laughs> and I will see you tomorrow. Bye.